Hello everyone, my name is Rick and welcome back to the Box Not channel. Today I decided I wanted to take a break from Warhammer 40k to indulge in something else. And that something else is called Death Race, a game where you take little matchbox cars, chop them up, mod them up, and race them against your friends Mad Max style. A little bit of the inspiration came from the fact that I am currently DMing a game called Cyborg in which we bought a module to allow my players to drive around and be cyberpunks. The other inspiration came from my YouTube feed with amazing channels like Bill Making Stuff and The Craftman Show and after seeing what they made, I had to divulge. So let's get into it. Now first things first is we gotta strip down these cars and sand them down so they can take some paint. But don't drill like I'm about to drill here and you'll see why. Yep. That's why I did it for the camera. And uh, if you can't tell, my hands are pretty shaky in this clip because I thought I was about to drill through my hand. Luckily, those little matchbox cars are made of metal. For sanding, I chose 180 grit. This stuff isn't too coarse, but it isn't too smooth. So that way we get some paint off, but we don't scratch up the cars too heavily either. So I want to make it very clear, you don't need Warhammer 40k bits in order to make your matchbox cars modded out with guns and bits and whatnot. But that's what we're using because that's what we have available. I've seen other builds where people will take small pieces of pens and or other small gears and make them look like little machine guns, which is pretty cool. But I'm lazy and I want to use my bits from my bits bin whenever I can because this stuff is going to pile up way too fast over my lifetime if I continue just adding to the pile and never using them. Next, some of these cars needed some panels, so I cut out some plastic card and poked some holes in it to make it almost look like it was riveted. The next thing I want to add to these cars were some rivets, so I put some flat jewels on each side of this little guy just to kind of give it some more texture on the flat surfaces. Up next is this plastic canvas mesh that we're going to be using to replace one of the windshields on one of the cars. I feel like this is going to really work well. It's over the top and really bulky and a little out of size, so it's going to give that Mad Max feel that we're kind of going for. Now I'm purposefully going over the top with the super glue gel. Applying this on the edges and on any of the seams that we're trying to cover up, when it dries, it'll look crackly and clumpy and like rust and or welding, which is exactly kind of what we're going for with the theme of these cars. Now on the back windshield, I could have gone with the same kind of canvas mesh, but I decided to give this car a little bit of variety and apply vertical bars using paper clips and super glue gel instead. I cut off the thumb of this aggressor flamethrower thing because that's what I wanted on this car, a flamethrower. What else could be cooler? I used other bits from the aggressor squad kit to kind of make it look like the tubes were coming from the inside of the car going out into that gauntlet that we glued on top. It looks really, really cool. 
to make this car look even more ridiculous, I took a little flamethrower from the Chimera kit and decided to put it on the side, making it kind of look like an engine that was sticking out of the car itself. And last but not least, to top this whole thing off, I took some bits from these Necron Goss flares, cut them off, and put it on the front to give this car some spikes. On the back end of the Speed Racer car, we're using a little Gatling gun from the Redemptor Dreadnought box. And next, we are repurposing this bit that came from inside of the car to be front end spikes for this little speed racer. Another little bit I found was this 3D printed hammer, and I really like these little spikes on top, so we're gonna saw those off and add them to the top of the Gatling gun just to give it a little bit of character. And heck, why not? Let's add spikes to all of the cars. For most of the cars in this build, you'll see I'm using the tips of toothpicks just to make everything look a little bit more menacing. And next up is the truck. We're basically going to be repeating everything we did with the past couple cars, but combining them all together on this one vehicle. So spikes, skulls, guns, goss flare bits, panels, back bars, and even a little bit of that canvas mesh in the front as the bumper. I really wanted to push the weathering even further, so I took some old hobby pliers and went to town, destroying the edges of these cars, ripping and tearing. I even went as far as to use my drill bit to put holes in the sides and on top of these cars to make it look like they've been in some firefights. Now that these models are all kitted out, destroyed, and weathered, it's time to prime these guys up. But just when I thought they were finished, I looked at these models all primed up and I thought they could use just a little something more. So I went back at them with some super glue and baking soda in order to activate that super glue gel right away. This is going to give each model a crusty look. So it looks like that there is a bunch of gunk and rust building up on the edges and sides of these cars. It was absolutely something that was needed. And of course, next is a Zenithal highlight, which is a white over the top of black to give the illusion of lights and shadows. We're gonna be taking advantage of this using some really transparent inks and some thinned down acrylics. But first, let's dry brush us a garbage truck. I used a gunmetal dry brush all over the garbage truck and a couple of copper accents on the more important bits. I wanted to make this garbage truck pretty simple, not only for ease of painting, but also just to keep things simple on the eyes. 
Sometimes I just feel like less is more and a simple dry brush all over a truck with a couple of accents can just really pop on the tabletop rather than going through and getting each every minute detail. Next up is some thinned down acrylic red that's going to be taking advantage of that white over the top of the car, making everything pop just a little bit. This part of the video is sped up. I don't like the way it looks, but bear with me for just a moment. To really enhance the shadows on this vehicle, I used a blue transparent ink. Now if anyone remembers, the way blue and red work is it makes a purple, so it's going to make these shadows really interesting and make everything pop even more. Now with this next car, we're going to be doing everything but in reverse, starting with the blue ink instead and following through with that red acrylic enhancing those shadows once again. For the third car, we're going to be using a neon green ink, something really bright and over the top of which we're going to tie in with a dark green, kind of going over the mid tones. And then we're going to follow through in those shadows again with a blue transparent ink, giving it a wide variety of different shades and shadows, making everything pop. Up next is probably an unnecessary step, but it's something I've been doing since I started painting miniatures, which is blacking out the metallic areas. This to me gives me an option later down the line if I want to dry brush on my metallics, which is something I really enjoy doing. I feel like dry brushing on metallics onto a black can really give some more depth and even darken things up quite a bit without needing to use known oil or any acrylic washes. It also ensures that if I end up not putting enough thick coats onto my model, that none of the strange hues or anything underneath are gonna pop all the way through and end up ruining the metallics in the end. So now I'm using Game Color's Gunmetal over any of the battle damage or edges where I think weathering and or wear and tear are gonna be hitting the cars. This isn't anything complex, I'm just making sure the brush does 90% of the work. I'm using something that's really frayed and broken up, so that way I can take advantage of the way the brush is naturally to really kind of scar up the vehicles. If you're ever giving this a shot, just make sure you're kind of treating it like dry brushing. I try not to keep too much paint on my brush, but I try to stipple around and kind of feel it out almost. Once you get a rhythm for it, it's pretty easy. And next up, my favorite step of all time, a black oil wash. Remember, if you're using this stuff, wear gloves and wear a respirator. Now, you've probably seen this technique before, but I'm going to re-explain it for some people out there who may have never used oils. The way I go about using oils is basically slathering on a thick layer on top of my miniature and letting it sit for about 15 or 20 minutes. That tends to stain the model well enough for me then to work back over it with some white spirits and some q-tips, therefore taking off the layers and controlling how much darkness and contrast and oil I want on these miniatures rather than slathering on a known oil and just kind of hoping for the best.
And after our oil wash is the last bits of weathering. So we're gonna go back over with that same gunmetal and some regular silver on top of that weathering just to bring things back just ever so slightly. We still want some of that gunmetal to look worn out and a part of the whole story of this model. We don't wanna basically reverse all the hard work we did. We just kinda of wanna make sure that people can see it. And for the very last step of this whole thing is rust. For this, we're using some old craft paint that is just a terracotta orange, followed over with some rust pigments. Now, rust pigments aren't necessary. You can actually use cheap chalk pastels, which I've used in other past builds. But for this, I had them sitting around and I thought, why not? Let's use them. At the end of the day, I almost see no difference when I use the chalk pastels and or real weathering paints. They both do the same job and they both look great. And I really suggest you try out weathering pigments because it just kind of gives a dirt, dry, rusty feel that I enjoy more than some other rust products out there. Of course, for the last red car, we couldn't use red rust on a red car. It would just blend in too much. I mean, we could, but it just wouldn't look right. So I went with a turquoise patina just to kind of finish it all up and really make things pop. I almost feel like maybe it pops too much, but hey, what are you gonna do? And with that, let's get to those glam shots. Hello, um, welcome to the end kind of credits of the video. Usually I'm sitting in a chair kind of presenting myself to you guys and showing at least some of my face, but uh, it's three in the morning and people are asleep in my house. So this little thing will have to do. I just wanted to give a thank you to everyone who has subscribed recently. In the last week, we've gained a lot of traction on some of our videos for whatever reason, and a lot of people have joined, and a lot of people have commented, and I just wanted to say thank you. We're coming up on close to a year. November 1st is when we uploaded our very first video. It was a late Halloween video, and to see 17 videos later, we're almost to a thousand subscribers. It's crazy. And I can't wait to 
continue moving forward. I don't know. I'm probably feeling a little sappy because it is three in the morning, but really it's been a great time making this stuff for you guys. And I hope you guys enjoyed the next couple videos are going to be pretty big, so they might take a minute to release, but I'm going to try to get them out in succession as much as possible. As for the podcast, I'll try to fit it in there while I can, but till then, I hope you guys enjoyed what I've made today and will continue liking and sharing with friends and, I don't know, commenting. It's been really nice hearing your guys' feedback and a lot of it's positive and uh, thank you so much for that. Anyways, I'm going to get to bed. It's really late and um, I hope you guys have a great day. Okay.